Hello friends, my name is Shivam from DevOps Schools and I will help you to enable your learning process in various technologies of DevOps, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data and many more. This is our initiative to help you by sharing multiple tutorials and videos. And if you want any specific tutorials or any particular topic, then please do comment in the below comment section and I will help you with it. Also, please subscribe to our premium services on YouTube, which will give you access to more content and videos to enhance your knowledge about all these topics. Also, if you want me to help you with regards to the online trainings and classroom sessions by our qualified trainers, then do please do write me at uh, contact at devopsschool.com. Thank you. The question is, very simple question is how to have data persistency in in pod because you know that uh, pods are in feral right uh, that the one the pod is gone the data is gone correct so how can we have the data persistency how can we have so guys uh, kubernetes cluster when you create you add a node mind it here you need you add a node but for what reason so you can run a pod basically to get you the compute and uh, resources ram and stuff like that right correct all of you we don't add storage there we add a node worker node for the ram and cpu more more or less correct now all of you yes so imagine the data the pod is gone pod is deleted you know that pods are in feral also so pods is gone container is gone container is gone data is gone everything's gone right that's one problem second problem is like let's say uh, the pod got created in one host and the next time the pod will be created in another host means another worker so data should be portable also right so these are the problem which we have with the kubernet so how do we solve it how do we solve it this problem how do we solve it the solution for this is volume simple volume so volume is a solution for having the data persistency in the kubernet volume is a solution for the having the data portability uh, portability in kubernetes so how it works so i would like to show you one image probably that will be more better i wanted to avoid the slides but i remember that image will be very good for you to understand so here just one image not entire slides others will take half day more than that so volumes what happens any volumes which you can attach to the pod okay any volume you can attach to the pod so look at this image very good image okay very carefully just spend some time over there see here uh, inside a pod you have a three container now inside a pod you have a volumes also so volume is a resources basically just like a uh, container is also resources volume is resources so now if you look at this volumes is a part of the pod and container is also part of the pod okay so it's a resources so what happens the volumes which is a part of the pod if it is attached attached to the pod that volumes is being shared in the all the container look at that image carefully okay so this is what i was talking about so uh, one more image you might want to see here look at this only image part in the pod you have three volumes attached now the inside a container at the different different location has been mounted so first volume let's say first volume in the container one it's mounted at a var apple and in the container uh, two it is mounted at var primary so the so the problem was i mean in a kubernet 
uh, how can we have a data persistence in the pod? The answer is volume. Okay, answer is volume. So what you do with the volume? You 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 uh, uh, ma uh, attach to the pod, attach to pod, and mount to the containers. Containers S here. Remember? Are you understanding it, all of you? So volume attached to the pod, mounted to the container. Did you understand that, all of you? Yes. But the question is, this volumes will come from where? Volume would come come from where? That is a problem, right? Where from where it will come? VMs. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wait a minute. The instances where we are hosting it. Yeah. So volumes would come from the storage technology. Storage technology. Now, guys, which are the storage technology which you know that? Tell me. Which are the storage technology which you know? Volumes will come from the storage technology. Which are the tech? Technology storage technology, which you know, I know that you know that is just a matter NFS. of you recalling it. Huh. NFS so, and uh... network storage, right? Network storage. What else? Sand. What else? Okay. Object storage. I'm writing it. And one is a block storage. Okay. So block storage, object storage, and network storage. So block storage is like example. I'm telling you, block storage means host file, host disk, host disk is also block storage. EBS is also block storage. Azure disk is also block storage. Correct. Now when you talk about the Object storage, then what? Object storage means uh, e, uh, S3 in AWS. Do you know that, right? Or Azure file. Do you know that, right? All of you? Guys? Yes. All of you? Google Drive and all. Here, if I say in network storage, then NFS. You can use EFS in e EFS in uh aws uh azure see i'm forgetting about uh, what is that blob so sorry 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 there's a azure blob here right azure blob okay and azure file in this are you understanding it or not so these are the storage technology you have from here you take the storage and add as a volume and the same volume you can add uh, attached to the pod and mount inside a container. So far, so good, guys. Are you understanding it? Okay. Yeah. Are you understanding it? But the question I'm having is how to first question, question number one. Question number one, how to make this storage available for kubernetes cluster that's the first question okay how how can you make this because this is somewhere outside right it's not understood by kubernetes so how can you make it available for the kubernetes cluster and second thing is how to attach to pod how to attach to pod okay that is the question question number one question number two so how to make this storage available for kubernetes cluster and how to attach to the pod so guys there is a two way here one is a static way and there's one dynamic way what is this static way and dynamic way I'll I'll put it up in this way so you'll understand better. 
let's say azure infrastructure you go for creating a disk blob and file correct you as an end user you are the end user okay you go and create just imagine how come that is you are you are able to create because of someone has made it available right at azure platform someone has made it available right correct no all of you in aws you go and create a volume efs volume ebs s3 bucket also you can create azure disk also you go and create blob you create file you create you go and create because someone has made it available so you are able to create right it's not coming from the some uh, some some sort of nowhere right it has to come from the uh, the azure data center only right and aws data center only right all of you are you agreeing with me yeah so someone has made it available and someone has made it available so you are able to create 10 10 gb of volume one efs you are able to create one bucket you are able to create all this thing you are able to create so now here here this is the same question how to make this storage available for ks cluster so static means manual way manual way means static means manual way uh, the storage is available in advance before using before using this is the manual way that means you have made the volumes available in a kubernetes cluster before using itself so you are you are paying no matter whether it's being used or not you are you are paying but this one is automated way this is automated way how how come it is automated way so storage is available not in advance is created okay created when requests are made that is a question things understand the flow i'll i'll put it in a simple way let's say i will you will ask me hey rajesh give me one terabyte for a byte of storage then i have it i have a four or five disk remember i have a four or five disk each one of these are terabytes one terabyte so i'll give it to you okay take it so that process will become what static or dynamic tell me that process will become what static or dynamic all of you guys hello i'm audible it would be static yeah it would be static because storage is available in advance before using but again next time when you come and say hey rajesh can you give me one terabyte of storage then i will go to sp market i will buy and then i'll give it to you it was not available for me but i went to market and buy sp market in bengaluru and then go and buy and get it to you so that's called dynamic see in that case see here in static it's costly right because in static i had a four i have to make this four or five storage available and you are using or not using but still i'm paying for those but dynamic actually it's just a little bit of waiting time but you will get uh, that uh, and cheaper i mean you don't have to pay in advance are you understanding all this stuff guys correct no yes yeah so guys think simple the question was again back to the same question question was how to have data persistency in a pod that means uh, pod is gone but the data which got stored in the pod container that should not be gone that is a question so how what is the process to do that so typically you have a solution volume so using volume if you attach to the pod 
and then that uh, volume you mount inside a container the in this volume you will have a multiple uh, data stored so the pod will be deleted but these volumes will not be deleted now this volumes you can attach to other pod and use the same data that is the persistency but the question is okay fine these volumes how can we create from where it would come so we have a different different technology right we have a hosted disk means that's a worker worker machine itself you have a hosted disk right like uh, you have a laptop also you have a storage it's not only the compute it has a certain storage also so hosted disk or you can if you are on aws platform you can use ebs also if you are on azure platform then you can use azure disk also object storage or network so these volumes can be created this volume which you are attaching to the pod which can be created from the different different storage technology but next question okay fine how do you make this uh, storage available for the cluster so there is a two method static method dynamic method in the static method you made this storage available in form of volumes in advance so you can use it user and user can use it during the deploying the pod or you are doing runtime only dynamic okay so now the question is okay fine rajesh uh, rajesh is the administrator of kubernetes cluster remember rajesh is the administrator single administrator for the kubernetes cluster all of you are the end user i mean developers okay end user means you are a user of cluster i am an administrator of the cluster so what is my job i my job is to make the worker available my job is to make the storage available what is your job your job is to run the pod inside it and uh, storage use the storage for example aws is administrator you are user you go to the aws platform and use it but aws team make it available for you all of you right so so you can create through the gui are you understanding it or not guys yeah so guys the question is how, how i'm an administrator how can i add it the storage these are the different kind of volumes in a kubernetes cluster so there is a one api service which is we have it pv we call it a pv what is the full form of it persistent volume now this is the mm -hmm. api resources ha huh. this is the api resources uh, using that you can add up volumes to the uh, I think my system got stuck are you able to hear me all of you yes yeah yes yeah yeah so here uh, if I if I want to go for the static one that means making it volume available in advance before using it so I will go ahead and uh, do the PV persistent volume okay this is one of the resources which we have okay and after that you made it available here you can use it that one so that here we have a pvc you have a pvc how to attach to the pod so pvc we call it a claim these are the two resources we have learned so let me tell you here in a simple way if you want to create a volume in a cluster please hear me out if you want to create a volume in a cluster in advance to make it available for the end user for the future uses then you have this is called a static a static way to create a storage and that how can we create using pv now i would like to show you one here persistent volume type type means these are the type storage types so pv you can uh, you can using this pv you can create a static volume okay volume static way but these are the technology which is supported see here these are the for example for the for the discussion sake i'm only discussing azure and aws but here you have a aws also azure also ceps also cinder also from the open stack by the way it got deprecated csi is also there some host path is there here you have a vsphere also 
so many volumes are supported that means if you want to go ahead and create a volumes for the cluster then you have to use this one and this itself support these all storage types are you understanding guys all of you these all storage type all of you okay. yeah Okay, these are the technology storage technology. Now the question is how do you do the dynamic one? So for the dynamic one, what will happen? The moment you hear the moment you request for the claim, see the flow I'm writing it. Okay, the moment you request for the claim, you do the claim. Claim will go and hit the storage class. It will storage class you can understand is like a template. Okay, it's like a template whenever you claim you want to use it see here I told you right automated way storage is created volume is created when when requests are made request means this PVC Okay requests are made so when the PVC you are making then storage class it will call it's like a template and using the template it will create a PV now storage class more or less you will get it working only on the cloud because here you can ask okay create a 20 gb of volume or azure disk 20 gb of storage that that way typically use use it so here <clears throat> static way manually we create manually manual we create a pv and here in a dynamic way storage class which is basically kind of act like a template which create a pv okay so these are the flow so far so so good guys are you clear with this yeah after that using the pvc we attach to the pod okay and after that after attaching the pod you can use inside a container how to use inside a container i have shown you let me show you some examples here look at this here okay here there is no pv and pvc process why because of we are storing in the host path so what is what you want pod pod dot spec dot volume that is where you are attaching that pvc you are requesting that directly and you are inside that test hyphen wall uh, you are using inside a container okay okay so host path is one of the driver host path means the host path means it will store the storage in the same path see here where the pod is running see here host path volume for single node testing only will not work in a multi node cluster that means in a simple way if you are storing if you are running a pod in one host and if you want to use the same host storage uh, for the volume creation in the pod then you can use a host path but that will not be portable because host path one host cannot be accessible uh, host path cannot be accessible from outside another host another worker if the pod get uh, change the worker so that is a problem okay so now i would like to show you one image so you'll understand that I'll just avoid that all the discussions. Huh. Guys, look at my screen here. Okay. So here, see here, administrator who is creating a PV. PV means persistent volume. Now there are the different different technology. By the way, this is a PV pool actually. Mind it. When I say PV, it's not like one volume you are creating. You are creating the pools of volumes. Okay. Pools of volume. So you see here NFS PV, GC PV, ISC, ICIP, ICSC, IPV, and all, all this thing. Now look at this here. Step number one: administrator made it available PV, different different pool of the PV. Now user like you, you will go and uh, re request a claim. Now whenever this is called PVC, okay? So whenever the PVC is been requested claim, then claim is honored and then after that you can uh, that claim that pvc whatever you got it you can mount to that attach to the pod and mount inside the container which i have shown you earlier so this is the overall process did you understand all of you
all of you yes rajesh okay so understand that this is the whole process so yeah so this is the theoretical part of it now dynamic you have a storage class this, this so what we learn how many resources we have learned we have learned one resources this is called persistent volume we have learned also storage class and then we have learned how to attach it to the pod request basically claim so this is a claim by the way claim and after that use inside a container okay so this is the overall flow so now i'll teach you how to do the pv and then how to do the pvc and how to in use inside a container so far so clear guys all of you along with that you can access our other tutorials such as docker ansible jenkins terraform splunk aws azure and various other devops related premium tutorials with our channel membership if you would have any issues with our channel membership you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video to get our channel membership click on to the join button select the 399 plan and grow your skills immensely please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest thanks for watching